All right, guys, so this is the day when we've got a special little thing right here. Uh, this is my friend Kevin, and uh, he is checking it out. Now, I, unfortunately, I lost the first video to get his initial reaction to it, but it, it's pretty awesome. Um, what, it, what it is, it's called a sub pack. Now, this thing really, it, um, it, it's like a subwoofer, but it's very personal. It delivers the uh, vibration straight into your back. And I have a subwoofer here, but this thing is way better for a, like a, especially for a small room that's not treated super well. Now, he's got some music going on right here. This is some opera trance, by the way. This is like some pretty nice, I, I like this music. It's, a, it's like a very artful blend between trance and opera, actually. You wouldn't think the two would mix, but it, they do in the way Jorio does it. Okay, so this thing is, um, it's pretty, you can, he I don't know if you can even hear it, okay? That's one of the advantages is, is like, <laughs> yeah, he's still tripping out on it, like the excitement hasn't worn off, you know? Um, it's like s certain things that you feel, it's just like, you, you kind of like laugh, it's like, oh my God, I've never felt that, felt music like that before. Um, so, it, I mean, to to me, it sounds like there's maybe a club like several blocks away, maybe like as much as a mile or two away. Like it's it's not that loud. Like he's listening to it at a good level for him. Um, now the reason why I want wanted to have this rather than that, rather than a subwoofer for this for this small room, it's a little bit about acoustics. Okay, so first off, this room is not very large. It's a bedroom. It's less than 1,500 cubic feet. What happens is you've got, you've got sound bouncing all over the walls. If you've got sound playing out of speakers and a subwoofer, it's gonna bounce between the ceiling and the floor, between this wall and that wall, and it's gonna bounce between this wall and that wall. And so this, this would be the longest dimension here, the, these, these opposing walls. But what happens when, when you've got sound playing in a room is you, your speakers are moving and they're pushing the air out and then pulling it in. Every time your, your speaker goes like this, you, you push the air out and it pushes and it pulls it back in. And so it creates these zones of high and low pressure, what happens. And there's certain, there's certain frequencies that, you know, each, each frequency, each pitch that you hear, it corresponds to a certain frequency and wavelength. So the wave, the lower waves are longer. The, 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 the bass frequencies, they, they, they are longer for each wave. There's certain ones that will align perfectly when they bounce back, they're gonna be high pressure in the same exact locations in the room, low pressure in the same exact locations in the room. And those waves will basically add to themselves as they bounce back and forth. And they're gonna sound relatively louder. Whereas other waves are going to um, partially cancel each other out. So if a wave is if if a wave is not matching up perfectly to the to the room dimension, what happens is, you know, you you, you might have high pressure here the first time it passes this point, but then as it bounces back, you have low pressure here, and those you know they 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 partially cancel each other out. So that that note's going to sound softer, and you're going to get a very uneven frequency response. Plus. If you got a room like this, you know, like a standard room, it's not built out of anything fancy. You don't have like hundreds of dollars of, um, you know, uh, uh, sound absorbing material on the walls. You're gonna have, the base especially is gonna escape out of this room. You're gonna annoy your neighbors, your roommates, housemates, whatever. And, uh, and that's not gonna be good for you either because you're gonna get less base for yourself. So it's really, this is a super good, like bang for your buck for for doing for just listening in a small room and having that good experience we got Sennheiser HD 28 uh, HD 380s these are ideal for recording multi tracks cuz you they have such good natural sound isolation they'll you know when you're hearing some tracks and then recording over them so what do you think of that what do you think of the sub pack man it's like being in the club yeah, man. <laughs> and and this is this is like we already recorded a video and, and like I didn't save it. Uh, so so this is like not even his initial reaction. Um, anyway, this the, these these headphones, they're super good for the price. One one hundred fifty. 
and they offer a super flat frequency response. Um, so you're going to hear music very much the way it was intended. Super good isolation. When you're recording, you you know you you're listening to other tracks maybe, and you're recording a new track. You don't want that those old tracks to leak into the new track that you're recording. And uh, and this is 300 right here. So. Um, but man, it is it is epic. The difference it makes is just epic. These headphones they they have a, a, a wider frequency range than humans can hear, and it's flat, so you can hear everything with them. But you can't feel the the, the only thing headphones can't do is is make you feel the bass. This you, allows you to feel the bass, and is really a world of difference experience. Now, if you have stuff like even this kind of quality, um, you wanna have. An audio interface like this. Um, this is essential for recording with a professional microphone, but it's um, like even an entry level professional microphone, like uh, like this thing right here, the AKG P120. Um, but uh, it also gives you a much cleaner sound, uh, cleaner output for your sound. So you've got uh, I've got the headphones hooked up, and I've got the um, the sub pack hooked up as well, independent volume controls, it's really nice. Clean signal, and I'm using not iTunes but Ottervana Plus that also um, uh, basically has got audiophile features in it, and one of them is it, it's good at basically hogging the resources um, so, that, so that you don't hear any pops and clicks from your computer doing you know, some other activity. Uh, you're just, you know, you're gonna get a consistent, clean sound out of all your music. It's um, that it, it's the setup that I've got. It's really great for just optimizing great sound on a budget, um, and not paying like thousands of dollars for audiophile level equipment. It's, you know, obviously that's gonna sound even nicer, but this is like really good bang for your buck here. All right, um, you could de and. But really, all you need to uh, the to listen to like bass whistling well is, is something like like just some regular computer speakers like this, um, and ideally with a subwoofer. This is also one hundred and fifty dollars. By the way, this is Klipsch, um, a Klipsch uh, Pro Media, right? So these, if I uh, open open this up, you can see what it looks like. The, Clipsch is known for their horn uh, tweeters. And, um, you know, they sound pretty good for the price for speakers, for s computer speakers, but these headphones are still gonna blow them out of the water. You, I hear things out of these that I've never heard before. It details musicians turning pages and creaking in their chairs and all kinds of crazy stuff, but the really awesome recording sound just phenomenal. There are two other things I wanted to mention about optimizing your sound on a budget. One of them is uh, don't use Bluetooth. I know it's convenient, but it's compressed. Um, I know I can tell the difference in my uh, car. I've got a sedan with both speakers. And, um, you know, when I have the phone uh, wirelessly connected and I'm playing an audio book even, I hear a real bad clipping. Um, it might not bother everybody, but it's just not ideal. Um, now, YouTube, unfortunately, is not is also not ideal for audio quality, but it's, you, you know, it's, it's what I've got to work with, um, and it seems like the most convenient thing right now. Uh, YouTube used to have the audio and video quality linked, so the higher quality your video, the higher quality your audio. They changed it, so now it uh, really just depends on the speed of your internet connection. You can select the video quality. You, you don't have, as a listener, you have no control now over your audio quality, which is it's really crappy. Um, I won't go on a long rant about that, but that's the reality of it. So the main thing you can do to, it's going to be compressed, uh, but it's, you know, it's what we've got uh, to work with. And uh, it should be good enough to, to hear pretty well um, what, I'm, what I've got coming for you. Um, anyway... Um, I hope you found it informative, and I look forward to uh, recording some good stuff and uh, for you to, to hear it.